There we go. Oh my god, that's so dark. Can't see myself. All right, well, let's see. Hold on. Let's see if I can. If I can oh, there we go. That's kind of me. Yep, yep, sort of, sort of. All right, there. I am. Yeah, I had a had a bit of a of an odd time trying to trying to find a good place. It's usually the place I, I do this. There's a uh, some kind of a party going on. I don't know. It is Friday. We tend to get a little crazy here on Friday, so well, we some teams do. I don't know the teams that don't work. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm being snarky. Uh, let's see. So yeah, so here we are. It is Friday. It's an interesting Friday. I don't know if you guys saw the post, but. Uh, all kinds of Viking Ninja madness going on this weekend. You know, we've got uh, we've got the body weight body weight prep course out at Advanced Fitness and Wellness, and in about what seven hours, I'm going to be jumping on a plane, red eyeing out to Newark and helping those guys. Uh, actually, I think I touched on this a little bit in the last stream, but body weight and martial arts are are definitely kind of going to be integrated you know like the first real martial arts seminar we're doing is going to be um body weight bow staff and and the screen so we're calling it body weight and impact weapons and as some of you guys might have heard we have decided to mandate that body weight prep is part of martial arts so you have to do the body weight prep before you get onto the martial arts path um we, we've talked about also saying body weight prep or steel mace prep um, but the, the idea is we want people to understand that you know, it's Viking Ninja training, you know, so body weight, Viking Ninja started from body weight and steel mace, and so you, know, you have to have kind of an understanding of that stuff before we want you to get into the martial arts. And I know some of the, some of you folks on the stream, I see, I know uh, Carrie, what's up? You know, she, she was at uh, the last steel mace. Uh, who else? Sammy, I know you've been to everything, so... So some of you guys are, are in a good place, but like I said, we're trying to... That, that's why we're offering body weight and martial arts together. Is so <clears throat> so that way, like you can come to one and then be prep. Okay, I don't I don't know how I got on that topic. Oh yeah, I do. But yeah, but like I said, a lot of cool stuff going on. The, the really big one this weekend though is out at Performance Ranch. Um, I think I think Cowboys out there. A couple other UFC guys are out there. I think Ray Borg is going to be at it. Uh, and that's um, you know Coach Isak, you know Sensei will be out there. Coach Zarin will be out there. I think uh, Coach Aaron's going to be out there doing some steel mace yoga too. So um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on. And um, probably won't stay on terrible long today. I didn't get a ton of questions. I have two questions from last week I want to touch on. And um, I said, you guys who are on the stream, if you have questions, you know, toss them out. We'll talk. Um, but uh, but I'm going to go ahead and jump right into those. And I'm actually recording this this time. This will be um, – I'm live streaming this over on my Facebook as well. And I'll grab that video and post it on uh, on my Vimeo channel afterwards. So if, if there's anything you want to go back over, you'll see that. But um, so the first question that uh, I teased this last week, and it's from a buddy of mine who is also a very, very accomplished martial artist, and he's also um, a bit of a fitness nut too. You know, he's uh, he's not a personal trainer, but you know he goes to seminars, he works out a lot. He's you know very health conscious, very fitness conscious guy, and he's also a I want to say he just got his second degree in a martial art called Tukong, which is a, a Korean martial art you might not have heard. Of. It's kind of like. Um, uh, he's gonna he's gonna slap me for saying this, and I deserve it. But it, it, it's almost like Korean Krav Maga, or, or like a Korean, like like a very very. It, it, it's a quite more intense than say Hapkido or Taekwondo. It's very much like a, or it's almost like a Korean Kajukenbo or something like that. But it's you know it's striking, it's grappling, it's weapons. It's kind of a hybrid style, definitely non traditional. But his question, you know, and he's been doing this for many many years. And his question was, you know, if I'm already a martial artist, what am I gonna get out of Viking Ninja martial arts? And that's, that's actually a really good question because obviously, you know, we're going to get a lot, we get a lot of interest from martial arts artists. I mean, I've gotten DM'd quite a bit over the last month from, you know, all kinds of practitioners. And uh, the first answer I would say is that if you don't know a weapon system, we'll give you some ideas, you know, because we like, like you guys know, we're doing, we're doing nunchucks, we're doing staffs, we're doing sticks and knives, we're, we're looking at some other stuff as well. So... And we're not we're not intending we're not intending to say oh it's better than any other style it's definitely different our approach is a little different but it's not it's not meant to be a replacement it's not meant to be you know kind of the be all end all like your one style that's gonna do everything for you and, and we don't want you to look at any of Viking Ninja training like that I mean, Viking Ninja training I mean you can approach it that way but we like to think that if nothing else you know you're gonna take some ideas from it and inc and either make your own practice off of it or incorporate it into the them into the practice you're already doing so. That's the first point is, you know, it's going to give you some ideas. And, and even if you know a weapon system, maybe we'll show you some, some, some ways to move your weapons that, you, that you're not familiar with. And then from there, that opens a whole other door because, you know, you might think, oh, yeah, well, 
you know, they showed me how to do this, but what if I took that and did you don't ever want to be bound by a system, right? You guys, I mean, you know, I've studied martial arts since I was four years old. And if I've learned anything, it's that, you know, nobody has all the answers. And the real, real value of, of training comes from exploring. I mean, you get past a level where it's like you kind of have to figure out what your own thing is. And the more influences you can take from different systems, especially because with experience comes that, pardon me for saying this, comes that bullshit filter, right? Like you're able to look at things and say, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. Or, yeah, that's not cool, but, you know. I, so I know you, know you know what's good, you know what's not good, and the more of that stuff you see, the more good things you get. You know, the more positive experiences, the more good influences you bring to your own practice. So the things that we've said about Viking ninja training and Viking ninja martial arts is that we are um, that we're fitness oriented, and so to that end, to me, what that means is that if you're a martial artist, what we're going to teach you is we're going to teach you some ideas about how to actually train and condition for martial arts. You know, I mean, when I first got into MMA training about uh, about six years ago now, I mean, I didn't know anything about, like, training or conditioning. And, you know, I mean, and, and as a lot of you guys might know who've done some, who might have seen kind of what MMA training was back in the in the dark ages. I mean, you know, it's like it's Metcon all day, right? I mean, it's like, yeah, it's, it's CrossFit on steroids. It's, it's high intensity. It's, you know, it's, it's 20, 20 minutes of, of battle ropes and sprints. But reality is that's, you know, I mean, exercise science has come leaps and bounds in the last, I mean, just in the last year. So if you think about, you know, you think about you have organizations now like the UFC Performance Institute and all these high level places that have been doing all this kind of all this research and, you know, deep, deep study into, you know, just how to how, you know, how to condition energy systems and how to. You know, what the best way to develop muscle and maintain your joints and conditioning for, you know, for performance, especially fighting performance. Because, right? you know, if you think about martial arts and MMA especially, that's some of the most energy system demanding stuff on the planet. So, you know, you, you, need, you need to train it that way. And that's one of the things that we really hope that people get out of Viking Ninja training is that you'll, you'll, take, you'll see things like the body weight, how we use the steel mace. And you'll be able to see how that connects to martial arts training. But more than that, you'll be able to walk back out from there and say, okay, well, now that I understand the kind of the overarching principles behind using a mace and body weight and the specifics of those movements for martial arts training, how can I use other tools? And how can I use those to work different energy systems and different, you know, different muscle systems, different, you know, condition my joints, condition my tissues you know and basically just create very well-rounded training programs either for yourself or for your fighters right because like i said you know you can't you, you know the idea that th th i'm going to try not to turn this into a rant because I, I look at how kind of amateur trainers for example train their fighters nowadays and yeah the reason you got you can't you know the reason your fighters are getting gas in the ring is because you're training them to get gas you know you're like i said you know you're doing metcon all day or you're doing high intensity intervals all day but you're not paying attention to all the other systems that go into going to doing that sort that sort of work, you know. And at the end of the day, you know, they're 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 you know they're, they're tearing things, they're tearing muscles, they're pulling joints because you're not conditioning that stuff either. You're not doing any mobility, you're not doing any sort of durability work, you're not doing any sort of joint and tissue health conditioning. And so, of course, you know, by the time they're done fighting, um, you know, it's like I was, I was telling my mentor today. You know, one of the big reasons that I got into durability and mobility work when I started kind of down my path of of um, you know, trying to get into the fitness industry was because I, I was I had seen so many people who, you know, were just jacked up fighters just from being around MMA training and, you know, these guys saying, you know, I, I really liked fighting, but you know, now that I'm thirty, mid thirties man, I just I just want to be able to go home and play with my kids. And so that's another thing that, that hopefully you'll take from this. You'll see how fitness training and conditioning actually fits into martial arts training. So I guess to be to be succinct, it's you know one from the martial arts side, you'll just you'll get a whole bunch of new ideas. Um, you know, Isik developed the bow staff and the nunchuck curriculum himself just because he liked to move those things around, and he has experience with movement and other martial artists. So, one new weapon ideas, new ways to look at weapons and training, and two, um, just how to. I, know, I look like like I'm trying to learn how to sign, and two, um, you'll get uh, like I said, you'll get ideas, some hopefully some game-changing ideas about how to actually put training together, put training programs together for martial arts. 
So that, and, and even like I said, even if you're not a teacher, even if you're just trying to figure out stuff for yourself, and even if you don't teach martial arts, maybe you'll find some fun martial arts influence um, practices that you can take back to your clients. I mean, you know, look at the guys out at, uh, you know, the, the Steel Mace Black Belts out in Chicago, uh, you know, uh, Jimmy Zane and, and uh, TJ, and they started to do, you know, nunchuck work with their clients who aren't martial artists. They're not teaching martial arts. They're just teaching, you know, how to swing the nunchucks or, you know, Jimmy is teaching his son how to swing the Screamer sticks. You know, I mean, I, if you, you know, I saw him on his live stream just doing the basic of Screamer drills we went over. And I imagine they're going to start working in both stuff or just because, you know, it's good coordination. It's, it's just good exercise. You know, that was kind of, that was kind of my whole intent with coming to Viking Ninja training was being able to just train martial arts as a movement practice. Because, you know, as I, as I kind of got older and older, I was like, well, you know, I'm never going to be a fighter and I, I don't need to train more self-defense. I mean, I have self-defense, but, but I really love martial arts as a movement practice. It's just so fun to move your body like the way you, you move your body. And that's why I do Kapoeta, for example, just because it's, it's just a fun way to move. And the fact that, you know, what differentiates, what differentiates martial arts as a movement practice from, say, something like Animal Flow or GFM, no offense to those guys, I, mean, I love Animal Flow, but the fact that you're having to develop your movement practice in relation to somebody else, you know, so it's not just me kind of out there doing my own thing. It's like, oh, no, I have to react. I have to develop this up here because even though I have all this cool movement, I have to understand how to access that movement when somebody else is throwing things at me. So kind of a long way to answer, but, um, yeah. Uh, so if anybody has questions about that, go ahead and throw them up. Otherwise, the next question I had was, uh, and I see, see Ronnie, you're on the stream. You'll get a kick out of this. This is from uh, – Actually, uh, uh, so Ronnie is a uh, is a guy that I trained with, and we trained together in San Jose for many years. And uh, he's opening a school out in Boise. But this actually, this question was from a, uh, one of our friends that we also trained with in San Jose, a guy named Andres, who uh, who is now a pretty accomplished jujitsu player. He's got he got his blue belt a little while ago. And his question was, how do you incorporate, or or what is your idea for incorporating resisting opponents into Viking Ninja martial arts drills? And um, that's uh, a <laughs> That's a subject that I really, really like to talk about because I think, um, you know, I, tr I try not to, again, pardon my French, I try to be one of those guys who, who crawls up his own ass too far about the whole, like, ah, oh, well, it's not real, and you know, everything you do has to be real training, and, you know, if you're not beating the shit out of each other, it's not real. And it's like, ah, eh, whatever. Like, you know, you're allowed to have fun. You know, you just Everything you do doesn't have to be, like, a simulated life and death struggle, you know. But at the same time, I do believe that it's cool to pressure test, you know. It's, it's cool to, like lock up with somebody you know it's cool to put the headgear on and beat each other with sticks or you know get or get the training blades and go after each other and try and or you know just jujitsu you know it's cool to like lock up and try and choke each other so so what we're thinking for at least what i'm thinking for viking ninja martial arts is there's it's it's kind of a there's kind of a, this, this multi-tiered approach to how we can sort of add li aliveness what they call to our training and the first thing is um you know we do a lot of partner drills and if you think about how partner training works in general, I mean, well, already you're getting that that kind of live sort of that, that what they call aliveness, and that to me is a form of resistance because you're not just you're not just flowing through things, and you actually have to react to somebody who's in front of you. Even if it's just as simple as somebody like holding pads, you know, you still have to be able to react to those pads. And the better you get at that, the more again, the more cognitive development you get, and the more you're used to dealing with live situation or a bit of resistance you know, it's, it's cognitive resistance but it's still resistance you know same with like when we're doing stick drills you know you can you know you can start by just kind of you know da, 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 just, just repeating the pattern but at some point you know you change that up at some point you kind of say okay you start to switch the patterns around and i think the guys who were you know when we were doing um the first kind of viking ninja screamer stuff got at the lake house a couple weeks ago you know that was one of the things i had the guys doing is you know, i'd show them a bunch of different patterns Patterns, and then we play games like okay, go through one pattern, now switch partners and go to the next pattern. So you so you had to find a new partner, and you also in, in all that chaos, you had to kind of remember what the next pattern was. So basically, what I'm saying is, so I think that's the first level of of resistance is that cognitive resistance, that cognitive load, just learning to think under pressure. And there's a couple ways you can, I think you can do that. Um, you know, again, back to back to Ryan Andres, you know, our, our Kaji Kembo training, you know, we, we, we would hear stories all the time about black belt tests where guys would have to do things like, you know, go through go through a bunch of drills and, and get all gassed, and then they'd have to take a shot, like a shot in a beer. So now they're tired, they're a little inebriated, and then they have to go back into their test, right? What's up, Leo Savage? There he is. And uh, so, or, you know, for our black belt test in Kaji Kembo, even our brown belt test, like we would have to do 
something like, I think for the black belt test, it was like a five mile run and then 600 reps of various calisthenics. And then we would have to UK for everybody else's test, which could be an hour, two hours, basically just getting thrown, getting hit, and then you would go through your test. So that's kind of another level of resistance. Um, just that, that energy system resistance, right? Like where now you are, you know, now now you're stressed, you know. So so even though your opponents may not be coming at you that hard, it, it feels like it because you're you're just gas. You are, you know, you know, your your mind is starting to go, your lungs are going, you know, your body's not reacting the way you want it to. So that's that's another kind of another sort of both cognitive and physical load, which again is is a form of resistance. And then, then the next step of that is obviously starting to ramp up kind of the engagement from your opponents. Um, yeah, when I says bullring, yeah, I mean, so bullring is, is a great technique. And what a bullring is, as you can imagine, is, you know, you're in the center of a bunch of opponents and they're just kind of attacking you randomly. So now you have everything. You have cognitive loads, you have physical loads, you have, you know, you're confused, you're tired, you're out of breath, you have, you're stressed because you don't know. And, you know, and those are things that you don't, you don't have to be beating the shit out of somebody. You don't have to, like, if you're in a board, you know, the guys don't have to come out after you with the intent to, to knock your teeth out. I mean, just by putting a little bit of pressure on you, you're, you're going to feel like, oh, my God, I'm in a fight. I mean, even when I was doing Sistema, for example, you know, we would do slow drills with four or five people. But it, at that point, it just doesn't matter, you know, when, when you don't know – when you don't know where the attacks are coming from and you don't know what to expect, I mean, you're already stressed. You're already under load. So the short answer is, you know, there's there's a lot of ways to kind of ramp up the different levels of resistance. And that's how I would like to approach it because I feel like that kind of keeps things safe, you know, rather than, um, yeah, rather than just saying, all right, just just go go square up with that guy and just, just try and beat the piss out of each other or, or you know, go just just go all dog brothers on each other, which, you know, again, no, no disrespect. I love the dog brothers. I think what those guys do is amazing. But... I think there's a there's a, there's a level like that you have to be at, you know, both physically and mentally, you know, if that's the kind of thing you want. And again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I I don't know that that's what we're trying to go for with Viking Ninja Martial Arts. And that's you know, one of these. I'm gonna have Sensei on the live stream, and he can kind of codify all this stuff to you guys. But um, yeah, those are the two questions I got. So uh, I got about uh, I got about ten more minutes if uh, anybody wants to. Anybody else has questions? I see some eyes. So otherwise, I'm just gonna knock somebody out for talking too loud. Well. So, dude, jeez, no, this guy. But uh, let's see. So what else? Uh, let's talk about upcoming seminars. So February 24th, uh, February 24th and 25th, out in San Antonio, we've got a seminar which I'm looking forward to. I'm definitely gonna fly out to that. Uh, we're gonna do some steel mace yoga. I know for sure. Um, I know Sensei's going to be out there. Uh, Coach Aaron's going to be out there. I'm going to be out there, and uh, our good friends from uh, from Mixed Fit, um, you know, Giselle and, and Josh and their crew are going to be out there. So hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully, I'm going to see you out there too, Sammy. You and your coach, Sammy and Crystal and uh, the, the your fitness folks. When are we coming to Boise? That is a good question, Ronnie. So actually, uh, Coach Zarin and I were talking about this the other day, and you know, I, I think I mentioned that to you. I mentioned Dream Body to you, and like I said, this hasn't been confirmed. So don't, you know, I'm not speaking for anybody, but. You know, we want to do the first body weight and impact weapons seminar out in Boise because, you know, that's that's where Zarin is. I'm close to it. Um, Something they can get out there. And, you know, Zarin already has all – Coach Zarin has tons of connections out there. And that's why we're thinking of Dream Body. I think he's taught there. Uh, we don't have a date yet, but we're thinking probably the back half of the year because we want to get more people – like we said, we want to get more people through body weight and steel mace first just so, just so we have – you know, just so people can come. And uh, – Peace out, Leo. Love you, brother. Good luck next. Good luck out at your seminars, man. I, I know you got a lot of work. Like Leo Savage, man, that guy's got tons of seminars. You want to learn how to do cool shit with the mace? Hit that guy up. Let's see, Sammy, location dates out for the Boise seminar. Not yet. Um, again, like I said, we're looking at the back half of the year, but location is somewhere in Boise. Um, and like I said, I don't want to commit Dream Body Fitness, but that's the front runner. But again, that's a, maybe I'll, I'll have to have a Coach Zarin on one of these days, and we'll talk about that. But um, I know uh, we just announced that we're going to be in Miami in May, I think May. Um, I know there's, there's a Steel Mason Box and Burn on the 19th, kind of like we just did out in Austin, and we'll be doing some striking there. And I know we're planning on another, maybe another striking event in May also. Um, a lot of the martial arts stuff is, is still kind of up in the air, um, but... We'll, we'll, we'll get there. So, but again, you know, if you, you know, Sam, if you have preferences, if you know, if, I mean, cause you know, I've gotten, we've gotten a lot of folks in out in Texas, they're asking us, 
So if you know if you know of like a good date to travel, I mean, let us know. Um, and you know, yeah, we'd want, we'd love to come out to San Antonio too. If you guys know anybody out there who's who's willing to host, so um, yeah, hit us up. But um, again, like I said, as as soon as I know dates, as soon as I can release dates, I mean, I'll let you guys know. You know, I'll be here every Friday. If I'm not traveling, I mean, if I am, I'll probably be here. So you guys will definitely be the first to know to be on my Instagram. I'll be on Viking Ninja Training. It'll be everywhere. What's up, Andres? And I just answered your question, son, from last week. But like I said, this this video is going to be recorded and on my Vimeo. So you can watch it and see what I had to say about resisting opponents. Um, let's see. What else? Um, uh, <laughs> But yeah, like I said, Sammy, like, like you know, like hit us up because we want to, uh, you know, I mean, you know, you, we, we like you guys, you know, we train with you guys. We'd love to, we'd love to come out to San Antonio more. Like I said, we're already going out to hang with uh, Justin Giselle and, or, you know, if you know anybody anywhere, um, you know, get in touch with us. And like date wise, we're pretty open. Um, like I said, I think the only reason which we're, we're pushing the martial arts stuff off is like I said, the main reason is, you know, A, to get people through, through the <clears throat> kind of the initial stuff and B, I know there's, we're, we're kind of having to go back and redo some of our uh, some of our curriculum. Um, I'll be uh, I'll, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. This is actually really cool. This is kind of part of how we work in Viking Ninja. So when we were at the lake house for our retreat, um, originally we were all just going to kind of do different things. And what ended up happening was, you know, I took the guys through uh, through some of the Eskrima work, and then right after that we did some bow staff work. And the way those two kind of went together so well, we both kind of we all kind of stopped and huh. We should do a screamer and both staff together, but what that means is because my, my curriculum originally wasn't um, wasn't you know wasn't designed with feeding both staff in mind. Um, I've had to go back and kind of change some of the drills a little bit, but for the better I think because it, it was really cool. I mean I, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to hype it up too much when you guys do, and, but it, yeah the the way kind of the, the double sticks and then into kind of the both staff movement went was was, was a very natural progression. So. Um, yeah, so that, that's the only reason that we're taking some time. Because, like I said, you know, we know, like, like I said, I've been a martial artist most of my life. Martial artists are my people. Uh, you know, when I get in front of you guys, I want to make sure you guys have good stuff. I want to make sure that you guys come, come away from these, like, jazz to, like, go back and, and practice these drills, practice them with your peeps, and come back to the next one, you know, because we are, because we've got, you know, we've got five levels of curriculum that we're planning on taking folks through. So, um,. Yeah, I mean, uh, I should probably get back to work unless anybody has anybody has any last minute questions. And, um, you know, I'll hang out for four minutes. Yeah, so I'll hang out till four thirty. That's cool. Uh, what else? Do I know of any other dates that are coming out? Um, February, May. I don't know of anything past May. Yeah, I think I think May night, May night, May nineteenth and twenty is the furthest date out I know. And again, if you haven't done Box and Burn, or if you have and want to do it again, that's a great opportunity. You know, come out for Steel Mace Day One, and then go back for you know go back get your Box and Burn for day, on Day Two. So the last one was really cool. Um, it's another we're gonna try to have all the Viking Ninja coaches out there again. So you know it'll be you know kind of like we did the last one. You know we had. We had the bodyweight guys. When is your grapplers program dropping? Oh, Andres, Andres, that is, you know, that's like near and dear to my heart, brother. Um, you know, I don't know. Um, we we kind of talked about it. We have, I mean, now that we got guys like, I mean, like I said, they're out at, at I mean, they're out hanging with Cowboy this weekend. So now that we've got guys who could teach that, I mean, between you, me, the wall, and everybody here, I mean, you know, we have folk. I mean, Cow, Cowboy loves this stuff. Um, Carlos Condit loves this stuff. I mean, these guys are all in on Viking Ninja. So, yeah, we, we've got some high-level dudes who maybe we could convince to do something. Um, we're not, uh, I'm, I'm glad you guys are all jazzed about that. I'm, I'm going I'm to show this to Sensei and say, hey, pe people want uh, people want fun grappling. So, uh, I mean, I want grappling. You guys, I mean, you guys know me. I, I love grappling. Um, and like I said, I, I don't mean to volunteer people, but what I can say is we are very connected to a lot of folks who are, very high level grapplers um so if, you know and it's it, it definitely like kind of feeds into the system and I, I mean i would love to do it um not teach it but i mean i would love to take part in it but uh and you know to me it's, it's definitely a natural progression i mean you think about how we move a steel mace and kind of how we learn to radiate with a steel mace i mean it's it's one of the best grappling training tools on the planet so 
like I said, it, it's it's a nat it, it's natural. Um, we haven't really talked about it, but I don't. I I think I'd be premature if I said we were closed off to the idea. And it's definitely something we probably have the resources to do. But you know, it, it, it's all it's all conversation. Like I said a lot of this is still work in progress. So, but I'm glad that you guys are interested. I, I will uh, I will I will let Sensei know. Um, okay. Anyway, it is 4:30, so. I'm, I'm going to be out. Thank you guys all for, for showing up. Uh, like I said, we're going to do this every Friday. So send me questions, uh, comments, money. No, I'm, I'm cool. But, uh, and, um, yeah, I will see all you guys next week. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys at some Viking Ninja Train. All right. Cheers.